Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to play around a little bit more with what goes on when we, when we use this arc length parameter, right? So somebody hands us a vector valued function, R of t. Uh, we're going to reparameterize using the arc length parameter s, right? Um, one thing just to note, because um, I made a mistake in the earlier video, but I don't really want to go back and reshoot it. Um, we, lower limit of integration here when we, when we define the arc length parameter should be zero rather than say a. Um, just for simplicity, right? I mean, you saw in the example, um, I was like, oh, what do I put in for the lower limit? Oh, let's do zero. Well, zero is what you want. Okay, um, so that's one thing to address. The other thing that should make you a little bit uneasy, if we think of you know, a vector valued function as a function, as a rule, tells you what to do with the input variable, right? Um, then typically the, the letter we use for the input variable shouldn't matter, just like here, right? Any dummy variable in the integral. Um, and, and so I think, when you reparameterize, you really should do, you know, as I did in the introductory video here, you should, you should probably give them different names, like R1 and R2, right? Because they're different functions. In, in the previous example, we started with, you know, like um, 3t minus 1 or something like that, and then we reparameterize, and now that t, you know, gets replaced with, uh, with s over 5. So now you have 3 over 5s minus 1, right? So... So it's a different function, because before you had three, now you have three over five. You've changed the function a bit. Um, but the book uses R for, for both um, the original vector valued function and the reparameterized vector valued function. So I'll, I'll stick with that notation. Um, I guess it'll work for us. I feel like it's a, it's a little bit of an abusive notation, but it'll, it'll get the job done. Um, all right. So the next thing we want to do is just notice that, OK, if I, if I go ahead and I calculate r prime of t, right? So that's derivative with respect to t of, of r of, of t, right? And, you know, we kind of, we do the usual chain rule, you know, okay, well, it's like the derivative with respect to s of r of, well, should we say s? <laughs> this, is, this is, again, this is a bit of the ambiguity here, right? Uh, and then we can have, you know, ds dt. We can kind of work something out like that. Um, so there, I, I feel like there, there's a slight fudging of the chain rule in here. Um, really, maybe we should have, uh, you know, I guess this r of t, maybe it should be s of t, or t of s. We'll leave it as is, okay? Um, so then this becomes, well, this is r prime of, of s ds dt here, right, it's, it's the magnitude of r prime of t. Now, um, the important thing here is now we can solve for r prime of s, right, and we get r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t, and well, hey, that's just the unit tangent vector, right, that's t. Um, now, Again, um, this, is, this is one of these, um, these slightly confusing things because we are, we are not saying that r prime is the same as t um, because we have different variables on either side. Should we really say, maybe we should say s of t on this side or should be r prime of s of t? Um, maybe that, that's more accurate. Um, that, that, that might be one way to resolve it. Um, but... Um, in the end, the, I guess the upshot of this is because we know that this is a unit vector by, by definition, what that tells me is that um, the magnitude of r prime is equal to 1, right? And that's kind of the, this key feature of this arc length parameter, that as you move along a curve, you are moving at a constant speed, a unit speed, right? You're moving kind of one unit in one second, if you like, right? And that's, that's, um, that's why the arc length parameter gets used. It simplifies certain calculations um, that involve, um, you know, the derivative of some vector valued function.